you know, uh, Matt's talking about some of the fundamentals that he's looking for in a company, uh, like the the a lot to do with the uh, with the people themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we got to make that judgment. But I mean, are there other fundamentals you're looking for? Even if you're not an industry expert, what are you looking for in a startup when you're doing due diligence that are that are green flags, red flags? You know. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's a handful. Most people know, you know, the ten or so things that you look at um, for a company. So some of this might be repeat, but um, when so I'll tell you some differences that I look for. When we're looking at the team, you know, some some people will want a full fledged team. Um, it, it, again, at this angel stage, I, th- I think that's kind of silly because that means one of two things: either either the people don't have the people are not employed and they're all working for you know they're all working without getting paid. Mm. Very hard to assemble a full team that mm-hmm. way. Um, people have families, they've got obligations, they've got mortgages to pay, so it's very hard. Or they are right out of school, still living at home, and then you've got the inexperience, so they might be. So I, so I don't really look at that, like having a full-fledged team as a, sla- as, a, as a must-have. What I care more about is who will you be hiring, and do you have, a, do you have an understanding of who you need, why you need them, who your first and second and third hires are. You know, is that team, whether it be one person, two people, three people, are they transparent? That's a big, mm-hmm. that's a big indicator for me. If they are transparent of, here's where, we're, here's where we're crushing it, here's where we're really struggling, I love that person. I'm like, okay, that's a person I can believe in, I can work mm-hmm. with, and they're not gonna feel like they have to mislead you down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, so if people are too rosy or not transparent or won't answer questions directly. Those, so I look at those things when I'm looking at the team. Mm. Then when it comes to the product, um, most people like to see some kind of proof of concept or a little further along. It depends on the industry whether you need an intellectual property or not. In most of the industries that are high tech jobs, it, uh, it becomes important. Mm-hmm. So same kind of deal. They may not have everything done, but I want to understand what is what is their understanding of their intellectual property position. Do they even know if they need a patent or not? Do they know what they what you do if you get one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so there, so so I'll dig a little deeper just to understand their their knowledge of that. Then then in terms of market and sales, um, this is where I'm probably this the maybe most strict market sales and how you make money. It, and I, I know you guys know this from talking to me, but this is an area where I think people don't put enough effort because they say big market, here's how we're going to go sell. And they've got like one idea that's not very deep. And, and a lot of people don't put a financial model together. And when they don't do those things, that tells me, okay, they really have not thought through how are they going to tackle their market? Mm-hmm. Really, what are they going to do? Um, in terms of tactical sales strategy, and then h- how can we believe any numbers that they say if they didn't flesh all that out with some assumptions? So mm-hmm. I think that's where most companies are actually the weakest and, and would be wise to really think through that. Even if they're wrong, it's okay, but think through it so that you have a starting point. 